Our next speaker is Kayla. <laughs> so Kayla is majoring in science and math here, and she's actually also in the C-STEP program. Uh, she applied to this internship because, just like many others, she wanted to expand her knowledge of the Holocaust, as well as to enhance her interpersonal skills as a means for bettering herself in the medical field, which she wants to go into, and she wants to deal directly with patients. And she told me that she expressed an interest in World War II since she was in sixth grade, and she had an interest in the complexity behind how the survivors managed to live on with their memories. So she interviewed um, Herta Zieberman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like pronouncing it wrong before. I was like, ah, uh, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> um, I'd like to thank Marissa and Dr. Flug and also Francesca from the C-STEP program because without her, I pretty much wouldn't have known that this existed. Um, well, like Marissa said, like I was exposed to World War II and sixth grade. Uh, my professor just came, well, my teacher came in. It was like, by the end of the year, you know how like you know, most teachers, like they don't really have a lesson plan, so they just let you watch movies throughout the whole like month and stuff. So he put on Band of Brothers, and I remember he he was really hesitant of showing us. Um, I'm not sure if you guys seen the movie, but there was a part like I think it was like 30 minutes that into the movie that they show like the concentration camps, and it was so it was so scary. Like as a sixth grader, like you never see any of this. Like you're just used to cartoons and everything's like rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> so like when I saw this, I was really impacted, and it really. Um, it really changed my perspective, like, wow, this kind of thing could really happen, and it did. So I just kept asking questions, and he wouldn't really go into it, so I always had, like, a gap. And every history class that I would um, take, I would always ask more questions about the Holocaust, but no one really wanted to go into it. So I was really happy that I joined this internship, and um, I'm really happy that I got actually to interview Herda, because she was so... She was just so welcoming, like as soon as I entered her house, she was just like, oh, sit down, I have some munchkins for you. And she just like went on and started talking about her life. And um, I felt honored because normally people that go through things like that, they were, they're really hesitant. They don't really want to live through it again. So, but she's like really strong and she just told me um, off the bat that, well, my family, where we lived was at the border of Poland. She lived on the western side, and she said that her town was at the edge where, like, basically you could, if you walk a few steps, you'll be in Austria, and then you could be in Germany a few steps later. So she told me that her town was actually the first to be invaded by the German soldiers. And um, some people say that she was lucky because she didn't, some people think, um, think that she was lucky because she didn't go through the concentration camps or anything like that. But she, she still did go through a lot because she had to work as a factory worker and um, she worked alongside with other German women that were forced to do this kind of labor. But her kind of labor was more intense, I feel, because she would have to follow the soldiers around and be among these guys that like are treating, like basically killing her own people. And she has to like make clothes for them, support them, and just do everything to help them out when in you know, in her mind, she's just like, why should I help you out? And she told me that she would walk about 10 miles every day, and they literally had to get, like, they would stitch, the women would stitch together, like, clothes and stuff to make, like, shoes for themselves. And at one point, some women would try to devise plans to, like, leave and try to, like, find a better future, and they would get gunned down right in front of them, and just to teach them a lesson, and when they would be walking, they would have to go through these small towns. And these people, like Austrians and some of the Polish people that they would go by, um, they looked at them like they were diseased because they've never seen people dressed in that kind of condition. They've, they were really um, hesitant to approach them. And when they did, the German soldiers would make it very clear to them that if anyone even like approached them or helped them, they would get killed. So she told me that some German soldiers would make an example and actually tell women to line up and in front of these townspeople, they would just shoot them off the bat and leave them there and tell the townspeople, well, if you help them out or give them any kind of support, we're gonna shoot you right in front of your family and everything. So no one really wanted to help them out and they just sat there and like watched them pass by the town and whatnot. Um, she was fortunate enough to actually, towards the end, to escape. She told me that she had actually brought a friend with her and that she was kind of like the leader because her friend was really like 
she was really hesitant on leaving but she was like look if we don't leave we're gonna we're gonna die here and if we do leave and we die we died you know with honor because we did leave and whatnot and um so she told me that she went and um escaped and they went into like a graveyard and i'm not sure what it's called those little like homes i guess that they put some bodies in um but she said that she found one of those open and they hid under uh, an autopsy table and she said that one of the soldiers, female soldiers, actually spotted her. But she just looked, they just had this connection and they looked at each other. And it was really bizarre because I'm like, I would have thought at that point the lady would have just been like, okay, we're going to kill you now. But she just looked at her and then turned around and killed a few other of the women that actually escaped that were following her and her friend. So, and like, I found that a little weird. But um, she eventually escaped out of there and they found a barn. And she said that because she was Poland, like she lived in Poland and she knew Polish, that these people inside the barn actually, they opened up to her and they told her like, okay, we'll take care of you because they didn't know she was a Jew and they didn't really know what was going on. So they were, they were really kind enough, but eventually like they found out because their son went, um, went to the, one of the major cities and they found out what was going on. So they were like, well, you can't stay here because you know, I have a family too, and unfortunately, like, you're you're not my family, and I can't really do much for you, but, you know, so you have to go, and um, she told me that they gave him directions, and she ended up in Austria, and she told me that this family with four boys um, and a little girl, their sister, a little sister, actually housed them, and she told me how her feet were so swollen from walking so much that she couldn't walk, and these guys would pick her and her friend up physically, take them to the bathroom, you know, wipe their business and everything. And these people would just be so nice. Like you would never think a stranger would come here and like pick you up and take you to the bathroom and all this stuff. And they were just, they were so humble about it. And they took care of her and her friend for a few months. And her friend eventually married one of the guys um, that were like nice to them. But um, she ended up leaving and she went back to Poland to see if any of the things in her home remained. And she found out everything got sold to some family. She didn't even know where all her stuff was at. And she found out her parents and everyone died. She was the only survivor in her family. Um, and she eventually just went back to Austria where she met her husband, which was also a Holocaust survivor. And they had their first child there. Um, I mean, her story was like really remarkable. I, Cause it's just like it just. She told me that she's a really a big believer in faith. Um, she just said she kept saying throughout the whole story like things happen for a reason. She's like, if I had tried to escape in the beginning, I probably would have died. But why I wanted to escape towards the end, I don't know. Something just pushed me to it, and I just ran. Um, which is something I also believe. Um, something she also told me to take like a take home message was that you can't. You can't judge other people based on like their actions, like because she said that the whole the whole connection she had with that German soldier, the female German soldier, for some reason she felt it was a little weird, but she she felt like she kind of like had <clears throat> she had an unspoken agreement with her, like okay, like let me go, and you know nothing was seen here or whatnot. So she said that she doesn't have any hatred towards the Germans and that. She right now is just living her life to the fullest, and that's what you should do on a regular basis anyway. So, um, yeah. Great, thank you. <laughs>